do you ever watch a sport moment on TV where you're thinking, man, that guy must be extremely heartbroken. Lots of mistakes and unfortunate events happen in NASCAR. This video, we're going to be looking at all those moments where it got you thinking that driver was almost a hero. Get ready because these are pretty great. Kyle Larson was in his midst of a successful 2021 season. Entering the playoffs, Kyle Larson was red hot, picking up multiple wins in the regular season. Starting off the playoffs, he was ready to claim his first ever victory in the Southern 500, a race that has eluded him multiple times. On the final lap, he was chasing down Denny Hamlin. He decided to throw it in there. It was a video game-like move that almost worked for Kyle Larson. But one of only three drivers that were winless, and now he's slow on the track. The five right up behind him. Smoke coming out from Larson. Larson up against the wall. It's a drag race to the checkered flag. Denny Hamlin's going to win it. Claiming the ultimate prize in NASCAR is a championship. It's one of the hardest things to come by. In 2016, it looked like Carl Edwards was on his way to his first ever NASCAR championship that was long overdue. But in the closing laps of the 2016 Homestead race, he pulls a late block on Joey Logano, costing himself a championship. After that race, Carl Edwards would immediately retire before the 2017 season. A little more of a lighthearted moment for Carl Edwards. During the 2008 Kansas race, he was trying to be a hero and try just to dive bombing in in the last corner on the last lap, overtaking Jimmy Johnson, claiming the victory. He was close to pulling it off, but unsuccessfully at his attempt. There we go. <laughs> oh, Carl, right oh, by. Hit it move. with a car stick. Here comes Jimmy Johnson. He's in the wall. He's in the wall. Can here he comes Jimmy. The wall? We're back inside now. Oh, wow. Carl Evers trying to hang out. Here comes Jimmy Johnson down, and Johnson will take oh, the God. win. Wow. At Martinsville of 2020, Kevin Harvick needed one more position and one more point to advance the championship round in the NASCAR playoffs. The position was right in front of him of Kyle Busch. He tried to do this last minute heroic spin on Kyle Busch to claim that extra point and advance him to the playoffs. Ultimately, it was unsuccessful. Can Harvick do it? The final turn. Let's go get it. He needs the position. Oh, Harvick spins the 18. Turns into the 18. He turns as well. The 18 crosses the start finish line, and Harvick is going to be out of the playoffs. Sometimes you do everything in your own power to become that hero in that moment. But unfortunately, sometimes it just doesn't go your way, even no matter how hard you try. Matt DiBenedetto was en route to his first ever victory in the NASCAR Cup Series with unfunded team Levine Family Racing. In the final laps of the race, he tried to lap Ryan Newman and it caused him a little bit of damage, ultimately hindering the speed of his race car. Denny Hamlin, who was in second place, was closing on Matt DiBenedetto before this. With DiBenedetto's damage, it hindered his car's ability to go faster. Hamlin overtook him and claimed the victory. Maybe Ketchum used the 12. Abaini is a pick. Denny Hamlin now has the advantage. He's in front. Hamlin in front in Bristol. During the inaugural NASCAR Cup Series race at Charlotte Motor Speedway with the Roval, Jimmy Johnson was currently on a year and a half losing streak. It was time for him to finally end that streak and get back to victory lane. Charlotte Motor Speedway has always been great to Jimmy in the past, but this is a road course. But in the closing laps, Jimmy Johnson had made his way all the way up to second place. On the final corner in the final chicane, he tried to do a last lap dive bomb on leader Martin Truex Jr., ultimately ending both of their races and costing them both the victory. This was not one of Jimmy Johnson's finest moments in his NASCAR career. Here they come, through the final banked curve at Charlotte Roval. Now he goes to the inside. Here comes Jimmy Johnson, oh! locks the brakes up. Oh, he's and spinning. he's going to slide, he slides through the middle. Truex gets oh, tagged. Now it'll be a fight for the finish line. Ryan Blaney in the 12 will win. He stopped, he came to a full stop to make sure that he was good with NASCAR. Where's he going to finish? Again, this was the final two turns. They were coming up on 16 and 17. Wow. Jimmy trying to get down in that corner too hard. Now, Jimmy stops here. Watch. Now, the stop. Well, I believe the 48 is going to be good on his scoring if Ryan Brandy sneaks through. Yeah, I was more worried about the wind than anything else. And I hate that... Uh, 
I started wheel hopping and took Martin and I out. That's the last thing that I wanted to do. And I put pressure on him into turn three. He washed up. Um, and I, I thought that I was going to be in the prime braking zone going into that final turn and have a shot at it. And I went to the brakes It started locking the rears and wheel hopping. And I didn't think I hit him at first. I knew I was spinning, obviously, but I guess I collected him in my spin and uh, certainly regret doing that. The race that has eluded Dale Sr. year after year after year after year is the Daytona 500. During the 1990 Daytona 500, it looked to finally be the day for the Intimidator to finally get that elusive Daytona 500 trophy. On the final lap entering turn three, it all went wrong. Everything Dale Sr. had worked for that day was all gone. This is the half a lap to go. Four car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coke down on the inside. Well, Earnhardt has Earnhardt slopping back. Something is amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope. Something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line, it's Labonte pulling up and an amazing finish. The Whitcomb Racing Team has won it. Unbelievable. Dale Jr. has not won since the 2008 Michigan race almost three years ago when this race took place. Coming to the green with two laps to go, Dale Jr. led the field down to turn number one. Chaos ensued behind him as cars started running out of gas and crashing. NASCAR did not throw the yellow flag and let the race play out. Coming to the white flag, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had this race in hand, and it all went wrong entering turn number three. Eric Almirola, driver of the 43 car, had a legitimate car that could have won that day. Even through adversity, he kept coming back to the front time after time after time. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't meant to be. Eric Almirola took the lead and had a 5 second lead on lap 73. During green flag pit stops, he inherited the lead again. However, he may have stayed out too long as his right front tire worn and he hit the wall coming off a of turn 2 causing damage. The final blow came on lap 215. He scuffed another right front tire. This time, it had turned number four and destroyed the car after leading 69 laps, the most in his career up to that point. He finished 29th. Oh, well, there's just, there's some bad feelings as a driver in a, in a race car, but not much worse than that. Throttle hanging and blowing a right front tire when you're wide open in the throttle. 500, Jerry Nadu up on Bobby Labonte by 4.3 seconds. A little farther along, and even if it runs out, he could coast it home. He's look, he's wiggling the car. The fuel pressure's low. Does Labonte have time to catch him? The leader's off the pace. Where's the green car? Here he comes. Here comes Bobby Labonte. Is he going to have enough time? Again, Tony. Off the final corner, Nadu's going to lose the race. Bobby Labonte is the winner. Hi, Jerry Bill. Jerry Nadu talking to the media. And first off, did it give you any indication it was going to go? No. Uh, it's an unfortunate deal. Uh, we we just didn't get good fuel mileage today. I'm not sure why. Uh, we were pulling a lot lesser gear than everybody else out there. Uh, usually, when you do that, you get better fuel mileage, but it just wasn't today. Uh, not sure why. But uh, UAW Delphi team did a super job. Great pit stops all day long. Um, got real loose there with about 15 laps to go, and, and but I figured I had a good enough lead. I figured I'd just save the car and, and bring it home. And uh, God darn it, half a lap to go and just, just wasn't able to get there. You told me on the way over you could not imagine this had happened. You never thought this would happen. Well, no. It, it, when it happens to you, you, you never realize it happened be, to, to anybody. But it, after all the races I've seen in the past, it's happened a lot to a lot of people. And uh, I, so I just got to take a good. Uh, there's one more race left. Hopefully we can win that one at Loudon on Turkey Day. And uh, hopefully this will spice up uh, the winter time and get ready for next season. He doesn't win, but he finishes with three straight top fives here in Atlanta. A first, a third, and today, a fourth. That day, Jerry Nadeau was looking for his first victory at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Ultimately, it did not come after running out of gas on that day. During the 2007 Daytona 500, fan favorite Mark Martin was so close to claiming the Great American Race Trophy, the Daytona 500. 
Coming off a of turn number two and down the back stretch, Martin had the lead. He was doing great maintaining the lead and blocking both lanes. But Kevin Harvick got a huge push by Matt Kenseth, ultimately putting him side by side with Martin. Mark Martin got loose in turn three, ultimately hurting his momentum, and he was not able to rebuild that momentum back to the start finish line. He's looking. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start finish line. No caution. They're side by side. Right to the line. Dog crash. Here they come. Checker flag. Wins the day. We got one car. And there's still oh, Ruth coming across the start finish line. Still like ready. They're wrecking everywhere. Boyer's on fire. Jeff Gordon's wrecked. I think this next clip is the perfect one to end off this video. Jimmy Johnson tries to take the lead at Indianapolis while blowing his engine with just a couple laps to go. Enjoy this next clip. Wiggles up the racetrack he goes, but he stays straight. Side by side again through two. Jimmy Keselowski was, strong. Jimmy said it was blowing up, Rick. Keselowski makes the pass. He's in front of the five, but not completely cleared him. Here comes the 48 to the inside. The 48 still smoking, three wide for the lead as they enter turn three. Brad Keselowski on the outside, 